I'm always on the lookout for great VR games. And while a vast majority of users are on a portable platform, it just doesn't have that massive back catalog that the PC space has. Not only does PC have some of the best mods for non-VR games, it also has a gigantic catalog of especially great single player games that you can only run on a PC. And among these PC exclusives is the debut title from Arcadia Studios. Hinge is an intriguing occult tale of cosmic horrors and all the associated madness that comes along with it. While the horror genre is really oversaturated at times with tons of asset flipped games that are very low effort, Hinge is not one of those. While those are like getting on a kitty ride at a theme park, this is like the monstrous contraption that you can see from outside the park. You know, the ones that you excitedly anticipate knowing that you just have to go on it at least once. Then when you get up to it and the experience stands before you, you start building much more immediate tension and you question if you're gonna be brave enough to buy the ticket and take the ride. When you do finally decide to take the plunge, the game looks visually stunning and buttery smooth. It's almost unreal. Sadly, it is. Now, what I'm about to say is with complete respect to developers, I've tried to dabble in game development. It's extremely hard and I'm not trying to say that I can do it because I definitely can't. But I mean, do any of you remember the Aliens Colonial Marines E3 trailer? Listen, the game really doesn't look bad at all. It's just that the trailer depicts this Half-Life Alex level of quality and it just makes you wonder relatively what happened from the trailer to the game actually it just looks very different now i didn't play the game at launch and i know that they did have a rocky one so i'm not sure if they like post launch downgraded the graphics a little bit to try to make it run smoother on other hardware what i can say though is that it hasn't really made that much of a difference because I'm running this game on a RTX 3090 and it still has pretty bad hitches at times, especially when you're going through doors, which is very important in a game called Hinge. Speaking of the doors, the trailer depicts these like randomization events and like literally you're going through all sorts of different doors and environments and it's changing, similar to almost layers of fear, that psychedelic vibe to it. But the actual game, it was a lot different than that. I mean, the doors do move around a little bit, but not quite in the same way that the trailer depicts. And I'm okay with this because it makes it easier to navigate overall, but I just wish that the trailer would depict how the game actually played. Just like any roller coaster, the ride isn't expected to be perfect, and it's gonna toss you around a bit here and there. So since I got the major negative aspect regarding the game's marketing out of the way, the different direction Hinge swings is honestly to its benefit. I, these people must be fans of Doctor Who, because these things move. It's really creepy. It's really unsettling. Like, see, it just moved. Oh my gosh, super unsettling. The concept of a very story-driven atmospheric horror game isn't anything new, but making an effective game that is both intensely scary and actually fun to play is much harder to achieve. The game starts out with a cryptic message about unlocking the correct doors, then you wake up in a hotel room in shambles. You find a notebook that has some very obtuse instructions and are greeted by a visitor who enjoys popping up from time to time, simultaneously startling you and giving you notes. After this, you smoke a cigarette and you're introduced to Mind Cabinet. Here you learn about when you die or quit the game, the doors will reset. Since this is a semi-procedural game, it does have some variation between deaths, but not very much. And it's at this point that you're really left to your own devices and you can begin exploring the hotel, seeing which doors or paths are blocked, trying your best to find the things that the notebook recommends. Everything that happens from this point on is unpredictable and you just have to use trial and error to discover the hotel secrets. As you explore and uncover more about what brought the hotel to its current state, you experience flashbacks of not only your own life, but others as well. Without any spoilers, the game is essentially about a cult that wants to use music to turn the hotel tell into sound. This may seem a bit weird, but if you're familiar with HP Lovecraft's work, this is pretty much on par. Now the first hour of this game does start off a little bit on the slow side, and it gives the impression that it might not be quite as scary as it looked in the trailer or that you think it's going to be. But you really should not let this game trick you into thinking that this game is not scary or that it's just another walking simulator, because it's not. <laughs> Just like any great roller coaster, half of the anticipation, anxiety, and fear comes from hearing each creak of the metal and feeling that weight of gravity as you approach the peak. 
In fact, sound plays such a large role in the game, not only thematically, but every little thing that happens continually works to put you further on edge, awaiting your inevitable demise. Arcadia also managed to create this really great foreboding atmosphere by gradually increasing the unnerving things that happen in the environment. In fact, the beginning of the game not being full of jump scares or immediately horrifying and gory makes you have this sense of almost comfort. This extremely false sense of security makes it all the more uneasy when the environment starts decaying around you and things that lurk in unseen realms start bleeding into the one where you reside. This makes the game's pacing have a really great sense of flow as you're pushed to explore faster, possibly running into danger along the way. This is also one of those types of games that's going to be making you second guess what you see further away in the dark. Like, I cannot count the amount of times that I swear there were these little black creatures crawling around, but I couldn't tell for sure, and I was not in the mood to go check it out. The unholy mixture of Aleister Crowley occultism with a Lovecraftian energy never failed to take me from a moment of discovery and progress that I was really excited about to my body washing over with chills just seconds later. Ah, uh, that was terrifying. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, that was shivers all and down my spine. You get away from me. Hinge is one of those games that kind of melds different genres of games together, and it has some, you know, elements of a puzzle game and elements of a walking simulator, but I wouldn't really call it either or. It even has some sprinkled bits of roguelites on top of that. But at its heart, I think that the game is primarily about discovery and kind of trying to just figure out things on your own. Like, it has clues on what to do, but I really enjoy the overall lack of direction. It makes the experience more symbiotic with the cosmic horror themes. Cosmic horror is all about facing what one doesn't understand or even comprehend. It's standing between the veil of the mortal coil and looking at the face of God, so to say. The lack of direction is only one part of the equation though. There's also the fact that as time passes in the game, the hotel gradually destabilizes. This can result in the power going off and you're only able to see a few feet in front of you. Stay in the dark too long and the hotel's inhabitants are gonna give you a good visit. Sometimes you're just walking around and notice the wood grain has this like fleshy tone to it. It doesn't even register right away, which is like super brilliant because when it does, it's incredibly creepy and visually it's absolutely a trip. As you progress, these types of occurrences become more frequent and I won't show you everything because some of the stuff gets incredibly frightening and if you know what's coming, it just doesn't slap as hard. Ah! <laughs> I have a tuning fork. Oh. Legit, that actually worked. Wow. Because just like every roller coaster, after you hit that point at the top, it becomes an insane ride until it's finally over. And believe me, some of the stuff that it makes you do and face are things that I just haven't seen in other VR horror games, at least for the most part. And while I may be a sucker for the occult magical themes, everyone should enjoy the game's artistic visuals. It has this roaring 20s art deco vibe, very similar to the likes of Bioshock's City of Rapture. While the graphics are not on par with games like Half-Life Alex, it does look really good overall both from the graphical fidelity and just the overall style and aesthetics. Really, when I think about this being Arcadia's debut game, it really does blow my mind. Like, this is insanely impressive, and I feel really bad that it doesn't get as much notoriety as it really does deserve. I really advise Arcadia, the developer, to not give up on this title. In fact, I really think that you should consider trying to put it on PSVR 2 when that launches early next year, because I really think that it's a cult classic, and I feel like it will get some notoriety on that platform. This also gets me really excited to check out Arcadia's other game that they have out called Requisition VR. Speaking of Requisition VR, if you want to try to nab a free copy of it for PC, you can actually click or tap on this video on screen and it'll be another video just like this one. So I hope you enjoy that. Or you can subscribe by clicking the little bubble next to me. I would love to have you around. And until I see you next time, maybe try out Hinge VR. I'd love to see what you guys think of it. Tell me about it in the comments below. If you've played it, I'd love to hear about it. But Regardless, I hope that you check out Hinge VR because it's one of the best VR games that you've never played. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.